As an artist, I've spent a lot of my time thinking about ways to become more creative. And over time, I started to realize that those ways, those methods that I developed actually work because I started to receive a lot of awards for my poetry, for my visual art, and started to exhibit my work throughout the world. Berlin, Milan, London, Buenos Aires, Brussels, etc., etc., etc. And so in this video, I will be sharing some methods that I use myself to become more creative, to generate those ideas, methods that you can hopefully copy yourself to come up with better business ideas, better art ideas, meme ideas, whatever you want to come up with. So let's start off right away. The first method that I will be explaining is one that I use myself to come up with a completely new painting medium, where I painted with lightning from the sky, 30,000 volts of static electricity. And I'm not going to explain the painting medium, of course, but I will explain the exercise, the creativity exercise that I, exercise that I used to come up with this painting medium, something that you can use yourself. Now, if you don't like the paintings, don't worry, you're in good company. Most people don't like them, and that's good. That's true for all art, for all creative ideas. Take Justin Bieber, for example. A lot of people like his music, and most people don't like it at all. And so this is a rule of thumb when it comes to creativity. If you have an idea in your head, and you think that most people will like it, then your idea probably sucks. It probably lacks originality and is too generic or whatever. If, however, you are afraid that some people, at least some people, really hate your ID, then you might, not always, most of the time still not, but you might be onto something. That fear is a good sign. If you take Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, for example, one of the most famous, if not the most famous painting of Pablo Picasso, he was afraid to show this painting for 10 years straight. He hid it in his studio, covered it up, and didn't show it to anyone. And when he showed it, guess what? A lot of people disliked it, which shouldn't be coming as a surprise because he depicted the brothel at a time where nobody talked about those things, let alone paint it and put it in the spotlight. It's kind of the equivalent of, of someone that would do... A, a ad for your local brothel in the middle of a presidential live debate on television. I mean, that ad would be pretty provocative. And so, of course, he was, he was terrified. And it's easy for us to imagine that he was terrified to show that painting. And so fear is not necessarily a bad sign. Fear is actually an essential ingredient of of a good idea. Anyway, we really have to get started, otherwise I'm going to talk about art for another 10 minutes. So, how do we come up with something new that hasn't been done before? How did I create that new painting medium? Well, it's the same method that Elon Musk used to create the Tesla car. It's the same method that Steve Jobs used to create the Apple features. It's the same method that Michael Jackson used to create his style, etc., etc. Now, the reason I'm saying this is not because I want to compare myself with those geniuses. I mean, I'm very much aware that they have created far better things than I, I have created. The reason I'm saying this is because you can just copy-paste their process even though you don't have the same budgets, even though you don't have the same skill sets or anything like that. That's completely fine. And in the end, we have to learn from the best. And so copy pasting their processes is not a, a bad idea. So very briefly, what Elon Musk did is he first went into the tech world developing PayPal. Now in the tech world, the idea of an AI system that improves itself, the more people use the system is very common. And then afterwards, Elon Musk went into the car industry. And in the car industry, he remembered this idea of an AI system. And he developed that into the, the Tesla car. Now, nobody in the car industry was thinking about AI systems in their cars. They were thinking about cars, not technology. And so, so Elon Musk combined two completely different things, merged it into one. And by doing so, turning the car industry completely upside down. And so this is a particular type of out-of-the-box thinking. Same with Steve Jobs. When he was kicked out, out of school, he followed the calligraphy class because the school was famous for that and he somehow felt that he should do that. And in doing so, he learned that there was a huge market for expressing oneself in different fonts. That people liked it. And then 10 years later, when he was developing the Apple computer, he remembered that and put different fonts in their word processing tool. And that then became the most famous word processing tool. 
being the foundation or part of the foundation of the Apple success. And so this is again combining two completely different things, calligraphy and computers, out of the box thinking. Same with me. I was very much interested in science and then took science as a minor at university and then later combined what I learned in those science books with art, creating something completely new that didn't exist yet. And this is something that you can do yourself. This is a very easy approach. I will give you some exercise to train your brain into experiencing this associative type of thinking, whatever you want to call it. But first I want to very briefly talk about your heart. Because the hardest part of this all is probably following your gut feeling, following what your heart tells you to do. To go and take that calligraphy class, even though you don't have time for it, you don't have money for it, but you want to do it anyway. Doing that science minor, even though it's not part of the curriculum, nobody in the art world, no employer will see it as extra value and the school doesn't even offer it, so you have to ask for permission in the first place but then doing it anyway, because it's, it's what your heart tells you. And this is something that for some reason is very hard for people doing something, even though there's no reason for doing it at all, other than somehow they feel like they should be doing that. Now let's talk about some things that you can do as well as some exercises that you can do to overcome those associative limitations. The first thing that you could do is to just incorporate art into your daily life. And by doing that, you will search for meaning, search for hidden messages and links everywhere in everything that you do. Now, the second one is obviously to start making art as a hobby. Now, I understand that most people don't want to do this. And so there's also a third thing that you can do. And this is probably the most attractive one. That is to start journaling to enhance your creativity on a daily basis. Now the journal exercise that I'm talking about is the following one. You want to ask yourself the very question that we have been talking about in this video and then brainstorm about it for 10 minutes a day. So what if I would apply something from, then insert something that, I, that you've learned in the past, to, and then insert something that you are doing right now. You want to do this 10 minutes a day, 60 days straight in a journal that is dedicated for this exercise. Now, the point of this exercise is not to have a journal full of amazing ideas that will change the world. No, the point of this exercise is that you allow your brain and train your brain into using its associative capacity and thinking in that way. Now, be warned, if you do this 10 minutes a day, I can assure you that you will come up with things that you at that moment think will change the world and will change the course of your life. Now, whether that actually happens, it's probably not going to happen, but those creative moments, those sparks are so much needed in, in most people's lives at this moment. And I can guarantee you that I have those have had those moments many times, hundreds of times, as a matter of fact. Oftentimes I come up with something and then I even try thinking, wow, this is just, this is, this is literally going to change the world. And then two months later, I watch it again and realize it's, it's a really bad idea. But, but that moment, that's, that's a really precious moment that you can get for just 10 minutes a day. I mean, it's, 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 it's nothing. So let me give you an example of this. I played tennis when I was younger. And so I asked this question, what if I would, take something from tennis and apply it to my current painting practice. And then I wrote whatever came to my head for 10 minutes straight. What if I use the tennis balls as a paintbrush? What if I use the tennis grips and make a canvas and paint on that canvas? What if I use the gravel and, and, and put it in, in soap and make a soap? I mean, this, this makes soap out of gravel. This doesn't mean anything. This is completely useless brainstorm type of things that will never happen in reality. And that's the point of this exercise. Now, eventually this exercise turned into a painting performance where I painted or drew a drawing on a large paper, dipping the tennis ball into charcoal and then playing against the wall and trying to make a drawing like that. I call it black and white prontism or something like that. And so it was a critique towards the whole prontistic movement, if you know that, I, I don't know. Anyway, the point here, the reason why I shared this idea is not because it's my best idea. It's definitely not my best idea. I've never even shared it before because, I mean, whatever this is. The reason I'm sharing this particular one is because it clearly shows you that you have to allow yourself 
to follow your heart, that gut feeling, even when that heart tells you to dip a tennis ball into charcoal and start drawing with it. I mean, this is, this is meaningless, you know? This is so strange that a lot of people would, would not do that, even though they really want to. Allowing yourself to do that, very important. Another way to become more creative is to prime yourself for creative activities. A good example of this is Salvador Dali's painting mechanism. What he would do is he would sit on a chair and he would take a spoon and a plate. He would hold the spoon in front of his eyes and the plate underneath the spoon. And then he would move the spoon in repetitive motion so that he would hypnotize himself to sleep. And then when he was sleeping, the spoon would fall out of his hand because he was sleeping. He would fall on the plate, making a loud noise, waking him up out of his sleep. And then he would quickly draw whatever came to mind, whatever he remembered from his dream. He would quickly write those things down. And then afterwards, he would turn those writings and drawings into the surrealistic paintings that are now famous. And so the reason why I love this example so much is because it shows how willing, how far the artist is willing to go to, to put themselves in creative states. How they allow themselves to do strange things. Now the reason this is such a powerful technique is because the reason for people's inability to be creative is oftentimes linked to their inability to think outside of the box, to use that associative thinking that I was talking about. And so in order to make this video about creativity complete, we should be talking about those ways to prime yourself for creativity, to prime yourself for associative thinking. Because the thing is, all artists have ways that they use to prime themselves and to put themselves in that creative state. But here's the thing. That would be another 15 minutes and frankly, a completely different video. And so we're not going to do that. I'm very sorry, predominantly because I already did. It's available, it's here, it's linked up, you can click on it and I hope to see you again. And remember, art is the only necessity.